Hello, it's Scott Manley here with part 8 of my complete guide to Kerbal Space Program for newbies. And uh, we're going to do something different. We've already done several missions and I just showed you more or less a blueprint for how to land on Minmus and get as much science as you like. Now, from this point on, you know, you should really be um, self-motivating, right? Go to Minmus again. Get more science. When you're really good at it, you want to go to the moon. And I'm going to show you how to build a moon rocket, but before I do that, I actually want to show you how to install mods because it will uh, help me illustrate a particular building technique. So let's talk about installing mods. We're going to quit the game to do this. Now, if you have downloaded the game, if you bought the game through the Kerbal Store, you will have downloaded it and you'll know where it is installed on your computer. If you have it through the Steam Store, then you need to figure out where it is. And the way you do this is you look in your library directory or your library tab on Steam and right click on the Kerbal Space Program uh, name there on, on the library on the left. And at the bottom of the pop up menu, you'll see properties. Now, Properties window comes up and underneath Local Files, you have this option to browse the local files. I'm apparently using one and a half gigs of data in that directory. That's pretty crazy. So yeah, you right click on it and it will take you into the directory in question. Uh, normally, you will install mods into the game data directory. However, I uh, would advise that right now there is no DRM on Kerbal Space Program. So I would actually advise what you do is you find another directory, create a new directory there. We'll call this um, KSP Steam, say. I, you see I've labeled some of these with version numbers. Go into that and just basically copy the whole thing and paste it in here. This will take a minute but it lets you uh, lets you work off a copy. And there's no DRM, so you can run it from this directory in the future. It's uh, not a problem. Now, where do you get mods? Obviously, the best place to get mods is the official Kerbal Spaceport. There's also the Kerbal Space Program forums, which have a bunch of mods, but uh, I'm going to go to Kerbal Spaceport. And yeah, near enough here, we have a search box up here. Search is kind of weird. So I'm going to search for engineer and there's a few items here. What you're looking for is Kerbal Engineer. Uh, you see, look at the one, Kerbal Engineer Redux uh, 0.23, download now. So download it, it'll take a small moment and start it. And there we go, we have an, oh, an evaluation and I probably should fix that. Uh, <laughs> So there we go, in the engineer folder, this is what you've got. It has a bunch of items with DLLs and stuff like that. There's instructions that actually tell me to copy the intact engineer folder into game data. Easy, right? Easy, isn't it? You just take this, you drag it in here. And now in the game data, we have uh, engineer. We also have Kerbal Tech, apparently, or oh, flags. We have the squad directory, which contains all the official parts. And we have the Scott directory, which contains a flag that my daughter designed. And that is not viewing particularly well. There we are. That's what the flag looks like. 160 by 256. Uh, you drop them in there and uh, you can have them in your flags. So now we've installed that, we can actually go back and launch Kerbal Space Program from here and it will have everything that we previously need. Okay, so having loaded the game, I've also loaded up the old Minmus rocket that I used in the previous episode. Now, uh, what I'm gonna do, or what we unlocked, was this Kerbal engineering system. Now, one thing to be aware of is that when you add new items to the game, you have to go to the R&D lab to unlock them again. And it, it can be a bit of a hunting around to find it. If you go into the R&D lab, you'll see this little number three here uh, next to this node we already unlocked. So you can unlock each of these ones in turn so that you may now use them on the spacecraft. So if you do this with any mod, you're gonna have to go back and add them. Okay, so now we have this mod, I'm gonna show you what it does because it is actually very helpful for a lesson in um, rocket science. 
Ah, uh, yes, I know I've tricked you. There is going to be actual numbers involved. Don't worry, you'll be able to figure these things out yourself. So, I'm building a very simple rocket, and then I'm going to add from this tab the, Ker the Kerbal Engineer system. So, this one's nice because it has spinny tape parts. They all do slightly different things, they all look slightly differently. Perhaps you want the digital version, but uh, this one will we'll pop up this window and it tells us all sorts of really important scientific numbers for our spacecraft, right? Uh, these are all parameters you can muck around with here. Now, what do these numbers mean? Well, it's pretty easy to go over everything. S0 indicates stage 0, right? So you will have multiple stages as you build out your rocket. The second thing is cost. So cost is not relevant as of um, 0.23, version 0.23 of Kerbal Space Program. It may be in the future, but right now it is just a number. Mass, well, mass is the import, first important one. So mass is basically the when you look over, when you mouse over the solid fuel booster here, for example, it tells you the mass is 3.74575. When we look at the capsule, it tells us the mass is 0.84. So that is the base mass of everything on your rocket added up. And uh, that's important because, you know, you need to know how heavy it is for how much acceleration you'll get. ISP is basically telling you how efficient your rockets are. 240 is pretty lousy. Um, 350 is better. You know, you'll get some of the engines in the game go up to 800 or even like 8,000, I think, for the... Uh, ion engine, but higher is better here. Thrust is how much thrust this uh, stage, because you can have multiple stages, is producing. Now, this is thrust in kilonewtons. So, uh, basically, Newton's second law says that the, uh, the force required to accelerate an object is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now, you can flip that around algebra style and you can say that the acceleration of an object is equal to the force divided by the mass. So actually, let's just do that. The force is going to be 250, and i got to do this, 250, and it's a kilonewton, so that's a thousand, right? Now we're going to divide this by the mass, which is 4588, and that tells us we're going to accelerate at 54 meters per second Per second. So after one second of acceleration, we will be traveling at 54.48 whatever meters per second. So let's just step to, let's skip this delta V column and we'll go to the thrust to weight column. Uh, this basically tells you the thrust to weight when you factor in gravity. So as we're accelerating at 54 meters per second, per second, Gravity is slowing us down. On Kerbin, gravity is about 9.8, right? I'm gonna, I think it's 9.8, so yeah, there we go, 5.56. So that means we're accelerating at 5.56 Kerbin Gs. And that's important because if your thrust to weight ratio is less than one for a planet that you're launching from, you are not going to move. You're going to try and thrust against gravity and gravity will say, no, you're not going anywhere. Um, so we can show that with other rockets later on. The delta V, delta V is a measure of how much velocity change you can get out of it. Now, remember when we are doing maneuver nodes and you drag the thrust vector out, it will show you a change in velocity. Well, that change in velocity is satisfied by your delta V capability. And so essentially delta V tells you how much how much maneuvering you can do. Obviously, solid rocket boosters you can't turn on and off, but uh, in this case it in this case this is a total estimate for delta V. And uh, there's two values here because one is an atmospheric value and one will be a value in the vacuum. So finally, your thrust, or your time, it tells you how long you burn for. So I'm actually going to show you how to calculate delta V. It's, it's pretty simple. So let's just take a look at this rocket here, right? As it's accelerating, remember, the force due to the, the rocket is constant as it accelerates but the mass decreases, right? So let's just do a quick calculation. I said it was um, gonna accelerate at, what was it, 54.5 for 36 sec or 30.6 seconds. 
So that would tell us that our delta v, naively, would only be 1667. However, it's 2897. Why is this so much better? Well, obviously, what's happening is as you're burning your fuel, your thrust is remaining constant, but your fuel is being ejected out of the back and your mass is going down. So your acceleration actually decreases over time. So what you need to do is use something called the rocket equation. And what you see how this has fuel in it. Imagine what will happen once the whole thing is empty. Well, okay, you can't really see very much here because it's taken out our, our complete uh, value. It's taken everything out of here. But, yeah, you see that our mass goes down and our acceleration goes up. So TWR goes down and comes up. Okay, so what we're going to do is use the rocket equation. If we look at the solid fuel booster, you'll see that if I do the right-click menu, it shows us that the amount of solid fuel here with this is 3.25, and that's in tons, incidentally. So you have to make sure you use the correct units switching back and forth here. That So 3.25 tons is 3,250. So if I get... If I uh, want to figure out how heavy this is after I burn the fuel, I take 4588 and subtract 3250. So that tells us 1388. Very convenient. Okay. So anyway, you want to divide your your start mass by your end mass. So that's 4588 divided by 1338. Right? So that means our mass ratio is 3.42. Now, the next thing you do is you use this LN button. That is the natural logarithm. And logarithms are very useful. They were invented by a Scotsman, incidentally. So there we go, 1.23226. Now, what we do is we multiply it by the specific impulse and multiply it by gravity. And we get 2898. And I guess... Kerbal gravity is maybe 9.81, uh, but you see how that's how you figure that out. You can go off and you can figure all this out on your own. There's a probably a bunch of uh, science videos actually explaining the mathematics, but that's what's going on here. And now we're going to actually take our moon rocket and build it into something more awesome and use the tool to actually help you figure out how to make an even better and bigger rocket. Okay, so this is the rocket that took us to Minmus, and we're going to make some modifications to help us fly uh, a little further and faster. So let's actually put one of these units on and see what it says. So total delta V is 6.65 uh, kilometers per second. Now, that is actually on the borderline. If you fly a perfect mission, you might be able to land with something like that. But uh, all the same, we're going to give you a nice big margin here. So, if you remember, we had this uh, these three rockets feeding into the middle here. So, this uh, calculator will actually calculate all the numbers. We can actually move this into the compact mode so you can get a better look. First thing to check is this first stage. See the thrust to mass ratio or thrust to weight ratio? 1.82. That means that we can, in fact, escape Kerbin's gravity. But, uh, what we're going to do is just chop off this and chop off the lander because we're actually going to work on an improved launch system underneath. You see adding this of course makes the uh, gives us much more delta V simply because we've got rid of this extra mass up here. But uh, you know this you'd have to land on the rocket with the, on the moon with this giant stage and since there's no landing legs and it's very tall and thin you would probably fall over and kill your Kerbal. So what we want to do is improve the performance of this. And I'm actually going to just show one example of how you might improve the performance. If I hold Alt and grab this, and we have three-way symmetry enabled, you could have, oh, and it doesn't, there we go, three-way symmetry. And what you've got is these fuel tanks feed into this, feed into this, right? So all the engines fire at the same time, and then we need to make these ones drop first. And there we go. So that gets us 8.73. That's pretty epic. But uh, that gets kind of hard to fly because it's big and wide and awful. So we're just going to toss that for now. What instead we're going to do is, you know, there's a three-way symmetry here. We could put four-way symmetry on here. But I'm not going to do it naively, right? So the naive way 
is to just put four of these on, and again that gets 7.7, .7, but um, you've got to remember you're going to be putting a stage on top of this so that we can land. What instead I'm going to do is show you something called uh, asparagus staging, or at least something which is popularly referred to in the Kerbal player community as uh, asparagus staging. So we're just going to add some struts here. So what you do in asparagus staging is you add things in pairs and drop things in pairs. So I'm holding the Alt key and clicking on an item so that it duplicates it incidentally. Uh, so here we have one stage and then we have the other stage. So we can put these in separate stages so that we, as we go up we'll ditch this one first. But we want this one to empty before this one. So what do we do? Well we take the fuel line and instead of pumping it into the middle, we pump it into its neighbor. Now, that gives us three stages. So we go up, we ditch these once these, these run out, then we ditch these, then finally we ditch the middle. And that gets us 8.12, and that's just the same amount of hardware. Look, note the change here. This goes to here, and we get 7.9 uh, kilometers per second. We do it this way. We get 8.132, that is asparagus staging. It's actually, if I just put this back, it's really just the same as doing this, right? Having stages going out sideways, right? And you know, if you really want, you could do, you know, six-way asparagus staging because you just need to attach more and more and that would then, of course, be another stage. Let's just make sure this is in here. We just have to keep adding stages, and that gets us 9 kilometers per second. But that's not what we're doing. We're going to do it in... We're only going to have four-way staging just for simplicity's sake. So let's try and make sure these are lined up nicely. Adjust our fuel lines. And uh, let's build a quick lander on top of this. So one interesting thing to also show you is this sub-assemblies menu. Now we've just built this nice little uh, launch stage here. Perhaps we want to save it for later. Actually, perhaps we want to put this launch stability enhancers on it and then save it so we've got it ready. And uh, let's also put on some wings because wings are always nice to have. Wings help with stability. Four-way wings. Okay, that is a pretty good launch stage. Let's put that in the sub-assemblies menu so we can save it for later. The way to do this is you hold down Alt, click on the decoupler and drag it down here. And now we have um, launch stage, launcher, right? So at any time, you can build your, your vehicle and then drop this uh, on top of it, underneath it, and it'll help launch it. So you don't need to keep rebuilding your rockets. Anyway, we are going to rebuild our lander very quick and simple. We're going to use this as a return stage. So if all goes wrong, you'll have a 1.2 kilometer per second uh, Delta V that should be enough to get you back to Kerbin even if you've landed on the moon. Underneath that we're going to land on the moon so we need a science junior and we're going to need another fuel tank underneath this. And to push the whole thing around we're going to need a little liquid fuel engine and to make the base wider I'm going to use these, come on, come on, wide base, there we go. Nice wide base, so these are fuel tanks this doesn't help with aerodynamics, what it does help with is the ability to launch, add launch, uh, landing gear. There, so that's nice, that'll be a much wider base and of course we should probably add all the other accoutrements to make sure that uh, our panels work and uh, our science works. There's, put a seismic accelerometer, we're only going to put one of each of these on, obviously. Pressure sensor, not going to be much use in the moon, but maybe you can collect science on the way up. We're going to put a thermometer there and a gravioli detector. And of course, the last thing we need is our mystery goo canisters. There we go, two of those. There is also this sensor array computing nose cone. I have no idea where I'd put it on this, so I'm going to respectfully decline. I will leave that as an exercise to the read reader. Finally, let's uh, put a ladder on the side here. Where are we? Yeah, we're going to stick a ladder, just one, and that will come out here. We're going to use the shift key, you're going to hold shift and uh, push W and that will adjust the angle at which it descends. I want it to come out over this leg, 
so that I can grab it. It just makes it's going to make it easier to grab. We're actually just going to fly to it. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Oh, one last thing we want to add here is some landing lights, just because it will make things a little easier. These landing lights will help us see where we're coming down because we could be landing on the moon and then not realize how close we are to the surface. So that is our moon rocket. We're going to call it Moon. Save that and launch. Okay, so here we are on the launch pad, ready to go. Kerbal Engineer, incidentally, uh, gives you all this interesting data. This is going to be very helpful to you if you want. You don't need to fly with it. I'm actually going to... Well, I get, I'll, I'll hide it down here just so you don't need to look at it. Uh, also, Note that I've gone and messed up my staging here. That could be really embarrassing. Throttle up to 100%, enable SAS, and off we go. So this rocket, again, is more or less balanced that you don't need to throttle back during the early ascent. Um, if, uh, you know, some rockets you need to throttle back a little to save fuel, this one is okay. And so if I right-click on the fuel tanks, you can see that these ones are being used, whereas these external boosters are not being used. So when this one reaches zero, right, you see we're going to go down. When it reaches zero, you want to stage and it will drop these ones but leave these ones firing. The idea is that you're essentially keeping the thrust to weight constant. The thrust to weight ratio is being kept more or less constant because you're ditching engines as you no longer need them. And it's a very efficient way to build rockets rather than carrying all that excess mass of the engines. And ditch. Oh, there we go. Little premature there. But I think our spacecraft survived. <laughs> Don't try this at home, kiddos. Okay, actually, what I am going to say is do try this at home because you should be able to fly this to the moon and get into orbit. Make sure you quick save. Then you should be able to land this, no problem. So I'm going to leave that as an exercise for the reader. Until the next episode, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>